I've been using the Surface Pro for about a month now, so I've got a pretty good grasp of how it works. This is Adeline from Pocketnow.com, and this is our full review of the Microsoft Surface Pro with Windows 8. Let's check it out. Microsoft invented the tablet category, and even though other companies have had better success at it, it's hard to call any of these tablet computers. Yes, they are tablet devices, but only Windows-based tablets are real computers that do everything you need. Instead of needing a computer for work and a tablet for play, the Surface Pro is Microsoft's answer to those in need of getting everything done with just one device, and so far, it has lived up to that promise. Let's start with the specs. Surface Pro has an Intel Core i5, 1.7 GHz processor with 4 gigs of RAM, and either 64 gigs or 128 gigs of solid-state storage. The 10.6 inch screen runs at 1920 by 1080 with a 208 pixel per inch pixel density and wide IPS viewing angles. Front and rear cameras are included, but they're only 720p HD resolution. Of course, you've also got a micro SD XC slot, USB 3.0, dual band Wi Fi, and Bluetooth 4.0. In terms of hardware, the Surface Pro is just as beautifully designed as the original Surface RT. It weighs only 2 pounds, which is lighter than many other Ultrabooks with similar specs, but if you're going to compare that to less capable ARM-based tablets, you'll find that a bit heavy. Still, I found carrying it around in my camera bag, using it on the subway or couch to be absolutely acceptable. The kickstand that's fully integrated with the casing is extremely useful. It's very easy to stand the Surface Pro up on any flat surface, and if you've got a keyboard cover, you can turn the tablet into a nice mini workstation on the go. The Surface Pro does not come with a keyboard cover, but it's certainly a distinguishing feature. If you do buy one, the extremely flat touch covers are very thin and light, but typing on them may be uncomfortable or inaccurate. If you really want to type accurately without any learning curve, go for the type cover instead, or plug in any other USB or Bluetooth keyboard you want. The stylus is a unique feature of the Pro, it's based on Wacom technology, which supports hover states, a right-click button, and an eraser. The stylus also magnetically clips the side of the Surface Pro right on the charging port, which might be annoying for some since you have to unclip it in order to charge the battery. Speaking of battery life, the Surface Pro is on par with Ultrabooks running Core i5 processors. That means about 5 hours of continuous use. That's not much compared to the 10-hour battery life of some of the other tablets out there, like the iPad. However, comparing the battery life of the iPad to the Surface Pro is like comparing the battery life of an iPhone to a Nokia 3310. Sure, they're both phones, but one is much more powerful. The Surface Pro comes with Windows 8 Pro, and that's a big deal. It's a full-powered desktop operating system designed for tablets, as well as other emerging form factors. Since it's full Windows 8, that means you've got access to the largest computing ecosystem in the world. Yes, bigger than Apple and Android combined. If you're a graphic designer, digital artist, or photographer, you can easily take your native files with you and work on them on the go. Sync them from SkyDrive or any other cloud service, or simply access them through the network. Engineers, architects, video editors, software developers, doctors, lawyers, practically any job you can think of with specialized software can be supported easily on the Surface Pro. You can even run Android apps using BlueStacks or boot up other operating systems using Hyper-V virtual machines. If you want to design a custom Nokia Lumia 820 case for 3D printing, check on the inventory database or write some new programs of your own, it's not a problem. Then if you want to relax on the couch with some Xbox games, Zinio magazines, ebooks, or web browsing, the Surface Pro is pretty great at doing that kind of thing too. The Surface Pro is for professionals or people who might want to be professional someday. Now there are a few things I did not like about the Surface Pro. The magnetic charger can be difficult to line up properly. Maybe I'm spoiled by wireless charging with the Nokia phones, but it shouldn't be so difficult to plug in the charger. The other big problem, which might be a deal breaker for many, is the fact that Microsoft did not build the WinTab compatible drivers for the stylus to support pressure input on many of the high-end graphics applications. Fortunately, Microsoft announced that they would fix this problem a day after the Surface Pro was released, but that hasn't happened yet. If you're a digital artist, you might want to try to wait for the driver update, but using the stylus in Photoshop on a crowded subway is still a hundred times better than using a trackpad or mouse on a laptop. Overall, the Surface Pro is the better tablet, 
the non-compromise, no excuses computer that'll give you the best of every world in the market today. Whether you're a professional, an amateur, a newbie, or a computer veteran, it's hard to classify the Surface Pro as a computer for just a specific niche. This is a computer for everyone, and as such, I do recommend it. Our final rating is going to be an 8.7 out of 10. The Surface Pro is a great device that can finally act as the poster child for Microsoft's tablet form factor initiative that started about 11 years ago. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and thanks for watching.